Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Worship for Northminster United Church. Today is Sunday, April 25th, 2021. It is good that we can be together here this morning. We always light our candle at the beginning of worship, our Christ candle, to symbolize that Christ is at the center of our lives as we work to deepen our faith and how we might more fully share God's love with neighbors near and far. This light guides the way for us. We also give thanks that we do all of this, that we live, work, worship, and play on Treaty 7 land. Um, offering our moment of gratitude to those who have cared for and been stewards of this land for generations before us and with us still now. Let us seek to pause and breathe deeply and simplify this moment, to sit and pause for a time. Let this worship leaning on prayer and reflection and sharing with one another Nurture us for the week to come. Easter, it's not just a day, it's a whole season. We are midway through this season of Easter. Easter is that unstoppable, unpredictable expression of God's love for humankind. The call of Jesus is simple. It's simply to live fully in the power of that love. Something, that love that is alive in each and every one of us. We learn about that divine love as it is embodied in the person and in the ministry of Jesus. That one who today we talk about as the good shepherd. As we look to this good shepherd, to Jesus, to learn how to love, may our hearts praise the one who raised him up and raises us to abundant life and love. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. If we are to dance with abandon, we learn and follow that we, that we can also begin to lead. We can learn those steps of the dance of love through the lead of Jesus and through all who have walked these steps and danced this dance before us. May we too dare to dance, even as we continue to learn the way of love. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. We lean into this day with the strength we have. God sends out a call that will never let us go. If rain still lingers, we open these umbrellas of love and we set out anyway. For we are called to dance again. Let's pray. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, we know your voice the sounds of your steps. Your love gathers us, urges us, encourages us. Come and dance with us, engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen.
If you're like me, you've probably heard about the dreamer we're going to talk about today. And that dreamer today is Greta Thunberg. Greta is a young woman from Sweden. And her biggest dream is that the leaders of the world will take action to slow down climate change and to do more to care for our Earth. And since we just celebrated Earth Day, I wanted to highlight her efforts. Have any of you ever had a bad dream? Well, we all have probably had bad dreams, right? They can be really even very scary at times, even life-changing. We wake up and we remember them and we just can't shake what it was that we envisioned in our mind. Greta was the same way. She shares that when she was younger, she had some really bad dreams. And that was just, well, it was around all of our environment, that nobody was taking care of our planet. And so she started to talk about those fears and about how she could make a difference, that how, how she could make her dreams a reality um, and, and, and make them happen here on our planet. That happened uh, long before we even knew Greta. And even before we knew Greta, she would do things with her parents' help, like make signs and go stand out in front of gov government buildings to hope that politicians would hear her plea and hear about her hopes for, uh, for, for change. She even then inspired children in her area to help her. And more and more people, more young people, joined her, her initiative. Eventually, we got to know Greta all the way around the world and, and how so many people were joining their voices with her to dream about a better world than we were um, moving towards at, at this stage. Here are some things Greta has said about her big dreams. This is a quote from Greta. I have a dream that the powerful take the climate crisis seriously. At first, it felt like I was the only one who cared about the climate and the ecological crisis. The world is waking up and change is coming. So Greta has called for governments around the world to do more to cut emissions. And she's pleaded for, for big money, for, for banks, businesses, governments, the people who control a lot of the wealth in our world, to stop investing in energy sources that damage our environment. That's a hard thing for us to talk about here, isn't it, in Alberta, where so much of our, our well-being seems invested in that kind of economy. It takes risk to have those big conversations around what that can look like in the future for us. She dreams, Greta dreams, of a time when companies will change their focus to, to use their money to restore nature. She dreams of a time where, where all people will join with her in that. And as Christians, as United Church people, caring for creation is part of our faith as well. It says so in our new creed, to live with respect in creation. So maybe we can do some dreaming and be part of Greta's dreams. Our colorful umbrellas um, right now that we have this season are a sign of joy, a sign of hope, even on rainy days. And I want us to add to one of our umbrellas that we've been working on through this season. I have it right here. We've been adding our different phrases. It's a new day, heart melodies, join hands. So today, um, as part of our dreaming and our dreamers, on this Earth Day Sunday, let's add the words, just two simple words, we care. I'm going to write that on here. We care. There we go. There's our word for, word for today. We, words, we care. Let's end our time um, with a moment of prayer. I'm going to invite you to repeat after me as we pray. We offer thanks for dreamers true, for all they are and all they do. Let us become dreamers too, 
and bring new life to me and you. Amen. Our first reading for this April 25th is from John 10, verses 11 to 17. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down their life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as God knows me and I know God. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Holy One loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. And our second reading this morning is from 1 John 3, selected verses. We know love by this, that Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees another in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. This is God's commandment, that we should believe in the name of Jesus and love one another, just as Christ has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. A minister I heard years ago said that he didn't often use the metaphor of the shepherd in his sermons because he never wanted to suggest to anyone that they were considered a group of people who needed herding because sheep apparently weren't terribly smart. Now, I don't know much about sheep, but there's a video circulating on social media this week on Facebook. I even shared it, so if you were friends on Facebook, you likely saw it that might affirm that sheep aren't terribly the smartest uh, creatures. There was this very narrow, deep culvert ditch, something in the ground, very long one, and the sheep was stuck in it, head first, and the, the I don't know, shepherd or caregiver, whoever it was, modern day, was pulling on his leg to get this sheep out of this ditch. And sure enough, the sheep is released and he goes bounding off and about 30 feet away, plunk right down into the same long, narrow ditch just further down the road. <laughs> and so maybe, maybe that's true then about these, these furry love animals or the little animals that we love. I'm not too worried like this other minister was about um, how you might respond to this text of thinking you need hurting. Because every time I read that, I don't think I need it. It's not that that's the way it's intended in our, in our scripture. I think, however, this good shepherd image is one that is very comforting and that is very pastoral for us. That whether it might be that we are grieving or or ill, or alone, or caught in a tight spot, um, to know that we are always gathered, and comforted, and cared for, and looked out for is just such a powerful image, and it's one I can appreciate and relate to. Today, we also recognize Earth Day, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, and I think there is some very, um, there's some real special value um, as as we, in our very urban context that we are worshiping in today, that we are reminded on a day like today of our place in creation and our responsibility in caring for it. In the 23rd Psalm, for example, um, pastures are green and waters are refreshing and cool and calm and that path is just right. 
And these images, you know, they're often reflected for us in art, in art aren't they? Um, they connect wilderness with our urban landscape. So there's a real value in making that connection for us, that, that God is present and involved, and God is getting hands dirty in the work of creation and in our lives. Our scriptures not only refer to the good shepherd today, but one of them also mentions a hired hand. Hired Hand is certainly relatable these days because some of our most popular shows are ones like Heartland or Yellowstone. That one's not for the faint of heart, but, but be aware, there's a hired hand in that show. I love it. The difference between the good shepherd and the hired hand, which uh, is interesting, the hired hand, you could say, doesn't own the sheep, right? The shepherd is usually the owner of the sheep. The hired hand is not an owner. So supposedly doesn't have the same vested care in those animals as, say, someone who actually owned that flock. Those two descriptions draw our discussion into this idea of economics, whether, you know, ownership or not. The relationship of the hired hand to the sheep is a matter of just having a job, meeting one's needs with an income. He or, or she is happy to receive a wage for tending them. And when it doesn't serve that person's self-interest or when it gets too difficult, like when there's maybe a wolf on the prowl, that person is maybe more likely to run. So the, the role of a hired hand, you might say, is more of an economic one than maybe the the relationship of the Good Shepherd. You may know of the writer Wendell Berry. One of his writings is about two economies. It's called The Two Economies. It's an essay. And these economies certainly have very different principles or perspectives. Both of these two economies have very different values. For example, we participate in the human economy by virtue of things like knowledge and calculation and manipulation and acquiring wealth. So that's, that's our human economy. That's what, it, that's what the economy is like for us. Our particip participation in the other economy, which Wendell Berry describes, so we have the human economy. We also have then what he calls the great economy, capital G, capital E, the great economy or God's economy. He says this also requires those things in our human economy. He doesn't leave them out because we have the God-given skills of calculation and, and, and factual knowledge and being able to acquire things to, to benefit others or ourselves, to care for things. So, so that human economy is part of God's economy. But he also says in addition to that, that God's economy also includes humility, um, sympathy, generosity, imagination, that there's, there's a more to this idea of what God's economy is about. So he says that while the human economy can evaluate and distribute and use things of value, he says it cannot make value and how value originates only in God's economy. So he talks about these two things, human economy, God's economy. Of course, there is our worldwide industrial economy, right? The one who employs people around the world, often though without workers' rights. There's the industrial economy that almost cripples itself when a boat gets stuck in the Suez Canal for a few days. There's the industrial economy that thinks we need to mine for coal on the eastern slope of our Rocky Mountains while there's risk of hurting our fresh waterways. So you know the type of industrial, big human economy I'm thinking of. The industrial economy as well does not see itself as little. It sees itself as the only economy. But if we're using Wendell Berry's idea, this big picture industry idea, it really only does fit into God's, or rather it only fits into human economy. It doesn't fit into God's economy. That's not to say it couldn't. If the values and the focuses were different, that's how it could fit into God's economy. 
But generally speaking, this big worldly industrial economy, capitalism related, does not fit quite too well into that yet. It doesn't have to be either or. I love that about Wendell Berry's idea, that it's not human or God, but that it could be both. That in a merging of values, we can have both of these economies fitting together. I love that idea. Seeing the human economy as the only economy is very much a modern, secular norm in our world. But when we think about our human economy in relation to this great economy or God's economy, on the other hand, we really begin to understand what's really important through God's eyes, the good shepherd's eyes. We see that we cannot afford maximum profit or power at whatever cost. Instead, this idea of this must be, must be the, the maximum of well-being for all with the minimum of consumption, which both defines and requires neighborly love to make that happen. Barry says it's not just the sum of all these parts but instead it's a membership of parts, joined to each other, indebted to each other, receiving significance and worth from each other and from the whole. And how important is that when we consider our environment and this web of connection that we all share, that we, we think of this all as God's economy and how we're part of this membership, this interconnectedness. So in this membership of this great economy, everything we do counts. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. It can be little baby steps. But as Barry's words say too, if we do not serve what binds and endures, we serve what breaks down and destroys. The good shepherd, it can now be recognized, is truly and fully at home in this great economy, in this God's economy. For Jesus' statement, I am the good shepherd, is all about Jesus as the model, as the one who will do anything to protect those in his care, even death on the cross, and because he knows all those in his fold so intimately. The great economy is grounded in God's active love for God's people. That God has a claim on creation and on all creatures. Not as an owner or occupier, to use industrial, colonial type words, but rather as creator and rather as liberator. And at the heart of God's acts of liberation and creating is God's self-giving. Here in this Easter season, we in fact might well identify with the great economy, with the economy of the resurrection, in which all of creation is raised up. In this economy, the separation of humanity from nature, that they have to somehow be apart, it's overcome and brought together, which the resurrection showed us after Jesus' death that life and love overcome so much, that life and love overcome where, in fact, the environment actually is a priority and where those who are marginalized or alone or alienated are embraced and where overcoming injustices related to gender or sexuality or language or financial stability these things, these injustices become a, a priority rather than just the bottom line of companies and governments. And where the well-being of all people is a priority, not just for those who can earn their way. This national daycare plan, for example, proposed this week, great example of what we can do for the whole and not just those who can afford it. In God's economy, it is about grace, not works. So maybe that's what God's great economy is all about. About our boundary crossing, about how the good shepherd crosses boundaries and invites us more fully into participation and trust in the message and hope for creation and for our connectedness to the body of Christ. May that be so. Amen.
Let's enjoy and sing together this hymn now, Where the Green Will Rise Again. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to move in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. During our prayer time, if you have prayers you'd like to share in community, please type them into the comments section of Facebook now. Let's pray. For the beauty of the world and in all its diversity, we give you thanks, O oh God. We pray for the earth and hold in our hearts the planet that holds us. We pray for all who suffered from a who suffer from a disrupted climate. Those who endure famine and flood, droughts and wildfires, hurricanes and heat waves. Those who face hunger, thirst and disease. Those displaced by climate and resulting conflicts. We pray for our sisters, brothers, siblings all over the earth. We pray for our animal kindred and kin, for species threatened by extinction, 
for plants and animals struggling in our time to adjust to a swiftly changing world. And for reconciliation of people to people and people to land. We pray for ourselves that we in our words, our choices, our actions might be true and faithful to the earth and you creating God. In the prayers that we name today, we need your healing, O oh God, for our troubled planet, for our nation, for all who are struggling in body, mind, relationships, and spirit. Today we pray these prayers named a prayer from Phyllis of thanks for her sister-in-law, Patty, who is responding well to her cancer treatment. From Suzanne, a prayer that we continue to hold the Groot family in prayer in this time of grieving the death of Drayton. Prayer from Marcy for the people of India who are suffering and dying in, in numbers from COVID-19. And Ernie is wishing Tracy a prayer, a happy birthday prayer as she celebrates her 50th birthday today. Happy birthday, Tracy. Let us continue to name our prayers and to lift them as, as they are shared. Be with each of us now, God. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs around us. Lead us, guide us, surround us, and fill us. Join me in sharing the words that Jesus taught us. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. The drummer of the Grateful Dead, Mickey Hart, wrote, to fall in love is to fall in rhythm. 
it is love for, for each other by which we are known as followers of Jesus and that ever-attentive shepherd that guides us in that journey. In this world of everyone for themselves, well, perhaps we need that message ever more fully of that message of connectedness today. Perhaps our hope is that others will know that we are Christians by our love. And I thank you for all the ways that you give and show your love. Let's pray to bless these gifts, our offering. Holy One, bless our offerings this day that you may use them to fall in rhythm with our neighbors and our planet. Help us to build up the whole through our offerings this day. Amen. A few announcements to end our time of worship together. Hopefully you are getting and reading all of the wonderful announcements in our weekly Friday email. If you're not, please contact the office or sign up through our website, northminster.ca. But we do hope you take time to read those notes and share them with people you know. There's coffee after church today, and uh, the link is the same as every week. If you don't have it, though, by all means, reach out to me after church, and I'll make sure you get that link. The plant sale is going super well. Thank you all for your purchases toward our plant fundraiser. Um, I understand that some, um, some of the supply is depleting. Others have opened up again. So be sure to keep checking that, um, that link in your Friday email. Make your purchase. And I think you have until midweek or so, the 28th or so this week, to finish um, your purchase as part of this fundraiser. And again, invite your friends and family to join in on that and, and make some, some purchases and look forward to spring and summer. We are still planning our confirmation program for our teenagers. Um, reach out to me if you have any questions or would like to sign up for this, this milestone in your life that we can share in together at Northminster. And the youth are also, again, um, inviting you to sign up for yard cleanup. They would like to kind of help you with your yard a bit. Maybe you have some leaves to clear up, some perennials to cut back, a small project or a larger project in your yard, something that needs doing. Please reach out to Marianne as soon as possible so that we can, we can, we can help you out in the next couple of weeks. And our, our blessing to end our time of worship together on this Earth Sunday, this Good Shepherd Sunday. What would your life look like if you sought each day to dance the dance of love? To dance to the rhythm of the love of God moving in our lives. May we this week hear the music of the Spirit and follow in the steps of Jesus, whose love sets us free to dance with abandon. Amen. So let us on this Earth Day sing, and I hope you dance, to this very classic hymn from Jean and Jim Strathdee. Bye for now. We'll see you soon. Take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. Take, take, take off your shoes, you're standing on my holy ground. Well, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, from the waters beneath to the heavens above. So take, take, take off your shoes, you're standing on my holy ground. Well, the Lord looked around at the power plants and the freeways and the trash on the ground. Plantations growing rubber where the grain should be high. You couldn't see the sun for all the smog in the sky. Well, kids, you really filled the earth and then you subdued it. There's nothing in my book that said you're gonna pollute it. So take, take, take off your shoes. You're standing on my holy ground. Everybody sing. You're standing on my holy ground Well, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof From the waters beneath to the heavens above So take, take, take off your shoes You're standing on my holy ground You're standing on my holy ground
plants and your mills. You're killing off my oceans when you're wasting your spills. You're fishing like there'll always be an endless supply and fighting one another for what's left to divide. You didn't want advice when I first gave you dominion. Maybe now it's time to take a second opinion. So take, take, take. Some don't even get bones. I told you to be fruitful, and you sure multiplied. The rich took all the land and never learned to divide. So take, take, take. 